the Baseball Together Network presents the North Chicago Baseball Together Podcast with your host, Denise. And now, North Chicago Baseball Together. Hello, everyone. This is Denise, and welcome to my North Chicago podcast, recapping July 2022, including the trade deadline, and I am covering the Chicago Cubs for our Baseball Together family. As always, I want to remind you of the Baseball Together discount you can take advantage of just for listening to my podcast. We have some merchandise that is general baseball themed. Some of it is specific to certain teams. But for you, there is a discount for all of the North Chicago, that's what we call the Cubs themed items, North Chicago merchandise. So if you click on the Baseball Together link in the description of this podcast page, it'll take you directly to the Baseball Together website with all of our North Chicago items. You simply click on the item that you'd like, choose your size if necessary, add it to your cart. But before you check out, make sure you enter the discount code CUBPOD to save 15%. That's C-U-B-P-O-D. You can use this code more than once. So again, that code is CUBPOD. So, well, we are just slightly more than halfway through the season and a little bit into August as this podcast is coming way later than I normally do. I totally apologize for that. Um, All's fine here, but, you know, I am a little bit late. So, again, I apologize for that. Uh, But anyways, we we have the all-star break behind us. We have the trade deadline behind us. And we're still about as fun to watch as we've been all season. Um, in July, we went 11 and 14, including a nine game losing streak in the middle of the month. Um, and that's, I think the second or third very long streak that we've had. Uh, we got swept in a four game series in LA by the Dodgers, swept in a two game series at home against the Orioles, who are surprisingly looking like they might be a wild card team this year. Um, We've lost three of four at home against the Mets, and that was all during the week right before the All-Star break. After the All-Star break, um, we uh, swept three games out in Philly. We took both games at home against the Pirates, and then we finished the month of July with the four-game series against the Giants where we lost three of four. Um, So far in August, we're 500. We're six and six. But somehow, even though we traded two of our top relievers, which I'll, I'll get to that in a bit, we actually have the top bullpen in the majors since the trade deadline. So it's just, you know, it's kind of weird how you trade two of your best relievers and now your, your bullpen's just been amazing. Um, we're currently in third place, uh, two ahead of the fourth place Reds, still 15 and a half out of the division lead and also uh, out of the wild card, same amount, 15 and a half games. So barring a miracle and not that I expected it this season at all, at this point, we're playing to be the spoiler for playoff contention teams and for higher draft picks. You know what? It happens. And, you know, while I'm not okay with it, I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, so this year, the trade deadline, right? So usually the trade deadline is the 30th of, I think it's the 30th of July. Um, and this year the trade deadline was August 2nd. So, but it it didn't really stop the trades from starting earlier. It just kind of dragged them out. Um, we didn't trade nearly as many players as we did last season, but we did do some trades that I'll discuss. And there were a couple of surprises, So the first one was actually on July 30th um, when we traded reliever Chris Martin to the Dodgers for utility man Zach McKinstry. To be honest, I was just kind of meh, you know, about this one. I wasn't a big fan of Martin. He just, he wasn't reliable, like, you know, a lot of our bullpen at the time. You know, in the 34 games that he came in, he had a 4.31 ERA, gave up 38 hits, uh, 15 earned runs. He struck out 40, but the opponents were batting almost 300. I think 297 against him. He had a 1.34 whip. Was he the worst reliever? No, um, but you just you never really knew what you'd get from him when he came in. Now McKinstry, while he's picked it up as of late, I'm pretty sure I hit better than he does. 
Um, in 10 games with LA, he only played in 10 games with LA. He was hitting 091 with the Cubs. And with the Cubs, in his first five games, like he had yet to get a hit. Now, granted, he's not an everyday player, you know, for good reason. Um, he's been appearing more lately and he is kind of picking it up. Um, he's got some good speed, but it was, you know, I was kind of like cringing already, you know, when I saw his name in the batting order, I'm like, oh man. Um, so safe to say the Dodgers might've won this trade. Maybe. I mean, Martin was only signed to a one-year deal and it's not like we were competing for a playoff spot, but I don't know if I see McKinstry on the roster after this season. So that, that's that one. So then on July 31st, we traded mostly minor leaguer second baseman Dixon Machado to the Giants for minor league right-hand pitcher Raynell Espinal. And then to make room, we DFA'd right-hand, right-handed pitcher minor leaguer Tobias Myers. Um, Espinal had been assigned, has been assigned to the AAA Iowa Cubs. Um, so far, you know, he's only pitched a couple of innings. Um, you know, he, he gave up four or five hits, um, I think like three earned runs, something like that. But in the 83 and a third innings he pitched in AAA for the Giants, he had about a 5.29 ERA. So not great, especially for a 30-year-old pitcher who's still in the minors. But again, we didn't have a great bullpen. The good pieces we did have, you know, again, I'll talk about them. If he comes up, it'll probably be more towards the end of the season, um, you know, when they kind of pull guys up like mid to end September. Um, so, you know, we got to get what we can get. We honestly, we didn't have much room for Machado anyways, you know, being a second baseman, although he was hitting over 300 in AAA, but we already have a plethora of infielders. Um, and now, you know what, he gets a starting spot in the Giants. Uh, So, you know, good for him. And again, you know, San Francisco probably won this one as well. Um, On August 1st, so this one surprised me a bit. This was my first kind of real surprise. We traded rookie reliever right-handed pitcher Scott Efros uh, to the Yankees for minor league right-handed pitcher Hayden Wisniewski. Um, Now, he is the number seven Yankees prospect. And from what I read... Uh, Hayden was actually pretty excited to be coming to the Cubs. Um, oddly enough, you know, he, he said that, um, you know, he loved being on the Yankees because they're, you know, very much a big market team. And he thought if he was going to be traded, he said like the one team he would love to be traded to was the Cubs. And he, that's where he came. And oddly enough, a lot of his minor league success came out of the current assisting pitching coach for the Cubs, um, Daniel Moscos. So previously, he had been a minor league coach in the Yankees organization, and he helped Hayden pick up his fastball during the the 2020 minor league season that was canceled because of COVID. Um, And then he was also his pitching coach in double A. He taught him how to read hitters, pitch up his pick up his pitching sequence, Helped him kind of undo the habit of bailing out on a pitch if he wasn't successful using it. Um, so he's been with, you know, Hayden's been with Moscos for a while. Um, and now, you know, Moscos is on the Cubs. He's an assistant pitching coach here and, and Hayden's coming here. So that works out well for him. Um, in AAA this year, he was 6-7, and seven, had a 3.51 ERA. Um, and he had 83 strikeouts and about 89 and two-thirds innings pitched. Uh, so a good trade for the Cubs, even though we did lose a good reliever in Efros. Um, I, I like the, you know, the pitching prospect that that we got back. Um, and then, so the last day on August 2nd, the Cubs only made two trades uh, from their major league roster. We traded our, our pretty reliable closer back, David Robertson. He went back to the Phillies um, for minor league right-handed pitcher Ben Brown, who's already making a big splash in AAA Iowa. And then another somewhat up-and-down reliever, uh, Michael Givens, was traded to the New York Mets for minor league pitcher Saul Gonzalez. Gonzalez is about 22 years old. Um, He's currently in single A with the Myrtle Beach Pelicans. 
With New York, he pitched in 14 games, uh, picked up 25 and two-thirds innings, had a 2.81 ERA, 24 hits, eight earned runs. He struck out 29 and walked seven. So he, he's still a few years away from the major level. You know, like I said, he's down in single A and only 22, um, but not doing too bad. So th- now this one was the surprise. Uh, this was the big surprise. All year long, I've been talking about it. I know I've mentioned it several times. There were two big league players that have been heavily, heavily linked to trade rumors. The first one is catcher Wilson Contreras and then left fielder Ian Happ. Contreras seemed the most obvious to go as he's having a career year. He made the all-star team as the starting catcher for the National League. Um, he's in the last year of his contract with no talks of an extension, at least you know from what we heard as fans, um, haven't heard anything. Hap still has one year left of team control, so he wasn't as much of a for sure, but he's also having one of his best years and was named to the All-Star team for the first time in his career. So for the last month, and especially that last week going into the trade deadline, all the Cubs fans were preparing to say goodbye to both Contreras and Hap. Contreras even removed all Cubs-related subjects and pictures from his Instagram account like two days before the deadline. So it just, it seemed inevitable that he was going. So all day long on 8-2, myself and everybody else, you know, just kept waiting for that bomb to drop. And we waited and waited. And even as that time deadline passed, I just kept waiting. Because I remember last year, I thought KB was safe. Chris Bryant, right? We all thought KB was safe because I'm like, boom, time. KB's safe. He's still here. And then it came in like seven minutes after the deadlines. So a lot of trades trickle in about 10 to 15 minutes after being made at like that 11th hour, right? You know, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Um, But then the story broke. The Cubs were not moving either Wilson or Ian. Say what? I, that was me. I, I, my jaw dropped and I went, what? So needless to say, though, I was personally relieved because as, as I stated before, I did not want to deal with two heartbroken kids again because my son loves Wilson Contreras. My daughter loves Ian Happ. And they were, they both loved Anthony Rizzo before, and they were heartbroken that he got traded last year. I didn't want to deal with it again. So I just, I kept begging the Cubs. I'm like, God, please don't trade these guys. I don't want to deal with this again. Um, and even when I told uh, my son that, that Wilson survived the trade, he was like, wait, what? They were going to trade him? Why would they trade him? Like, he just didn't, he was like more upset and wondering why would they trade him than he was happy that they didn't. Um, but anyways, so, but again, I was, I was shocked. I was literally shocked. Now, again, you know, Ian, I can kind of understand. We do still have that one year left of control on him. So unless the team was willing to give up more than, you know, they maybe thought he was worth, I don't know that the Cubs were shopping him too hard. Uh, with Contreras though, my thoughts are, I think the Cubs just wanted more than teams were willing to give them for a rental. They they did not want to give up the prospects. And there there's no guarantees the Cubs wouldn't re-sign him after the season if they had traded him. And Wilson's made it abundantly clear that he wants to stay here, even more so than what we heard from Rizzo and Javi, you know, Schwarber, KB, all them, you know, before in the past, they all said they wanted to stay here. They would love to stay here. I think Javi really wanted to, um, you know, again, he was like five days away from re-signing. Um, it, but Wilson, you know, he was visibly emotional in the last game at Wrigley before the trade deadline. He was emotional in the last pre-deadline game on the road to the Cubs fans that were there. And then after he wasn't traded that same night, He was like a kid playing in his first ever major league game. The Cubs were still on the road and he was just ecstatic to the Cubs fans cheers that were in attendance at that game. Even more ecstatic when he came back to Wrigley and he got another standing ovation and, you know, some Wilson, Wilson, you know, the chance. Um, He put the Cubs back on his Instagram he won the Cubs Heart and Hustle Award for the year, and then he hit a go-ahead two-run home run against the Marlins in their first home series after the deadline, 
and all was right in Wrigleyville, or rather Willieville, as we called it that weekend. So now, you know, what do Hoyer and Ricketts do? Well, here's, here's their options. If they don't extend him, they have to make him a qualifying offer after the season. They have to, um, which Wilson can either accept or decline. If he accepts, well, then we keep him, you know, and it, it, this may hurt his, his uh, you know, free agency signing. Um, if he declines, then he becomes a free agent and the Cubs get a draft pick compensation for, for him from the team that signs him if it's not the Cubs. I'm still hoping they extend him, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm thinking the Cubs were just asking more than, than what prospects uh, teams were willing to give up. And, you know, I, I don't know that the Cubs would be willing now then, if, if they couldn't get the prospects at the trade, are they really, really willing to wait for a draft pick comp from them? Um, or for him, I should say, you know, if they don't re-sign him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, they have to make him a qualifying offer if they don't extend him. Uh, you know, otherwise they get a draft pick. Uh, so that's that. I, I still hope they extend him. I, I love the guy. Um, but that that was it for the Cubs this year. Again, not nearly as many moves as we did last season. And maybe that was just the market this season. And in all honesty, I wasn't overly impressed with the trade deadline this year. Not not even from the Cubs aspect, but just overall across MLB. It got very hyped up. And there were a few outside the Cubs that were eyeball raising. Um, I'll cover a couple of them. You know, last year I went over like a lot of them. But these these were my probably my three or four biggest that... I saw. Um, and not really the biggest, I'll, I'll explain. But so the biggest, of course, it was, you know, Juan Soto from the Nationals. Soto had declined an extension from the Nationals a few weeks ago. You know, that was worth, I think it was like $440 million over 15 years. So it was pretty well known that they were going to trade him kind of once he declined that. Um, there were several rumored teams in the running. I, I don't think the Cubs were ever rumored. Um, or mention, which I'm not shocked about, but he ended up going to the Padres. Um, but not without some drama. So originally the Padres were getting both Soto and first baseman Josh Bell. And then the return package was shortstop CJ Abrams, um, starting pitcher Mackenzie Gore, who has been outstanding this season as a rookie. And then it also had the Padres giving up one of their top top prospects in outfielder Robert Hassel the third, um, along with outfielder James Woods and right-handed pitcher Jarlin Susanna. And then it came out that it also included first baseman Eric Hosmer. So everyone thought that the deal was done. Um, and because it, it's kind of been known that the Padres have wanted to move Hosmer, you know, he's got like a year, I think a year, something like that, like $39 million left on his contract. So the the Padres wanted to get some of that off their books to get under the luxury tax. Um, but then it came out that Hosmer had a no a limited no trade clause in his contract. And guess what? Washington's one of those teams that he didn't want to be traded to. So Hosmer said, nope, and he rejected the trade from, from his point of view. He didn't want to be included in the trade. So then for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, everyone said, oh, the deal's dead. Soto's back, you know, on the market. And then it came back. They're like, no, 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 no. The deal's still on. We're just not including Hosmer. And then finally, first baseman Luke Voigt learned that he was replacing Hosmer in the trade. And so he went off to the Nats. So how ticked are you if you're Voigt, right? Um, You know, do, do you think he's like, you know, mad about that. Like Hosmer's supposed to be traded. Hosmer, you know, and Hosmer had every right. He had the limited no trade clause in his contract. He has every right to invoke that no trade. But, you know, like Luke Voigt is just like, like just an innocent bystander over here. And he gets traded to the lowly nationals now off, off the Padres. Um, and now what, and then what was funnier was about an hour later, the Padres still traded Hosmer but he went to the Boston Red Sox. He was okay with that team. Uh, so he was still gone. So that was probably the biggest headliner of the trade this, you know, this season. 
Um, if I think if I pick one that shocked me the most, it was the Brewers. They traded their star and extremely good closer, Josh Hader, also to the Padres. Uh, Padres, man, they they stacked up. Uh, they got left-handed closer Taylor Rogers, uh, left-handed pitching prospect Robert Gasser, outfielder Asturi Ruiz, and right-handed pitcher Denelson Lamette um, in exchange for Hader. Now, Hader still had a year left on his contract. He's not a free agent until after 2023. And the Brewers at the time, I think they still had like a two-game lead over the Cardinals for the division. And now since then, they've gone like four and six in their last 10 games. They've fallen into second place. They're now a game and a half behind the Cardinals for the division lead. And they're a game and a half out of the final wild card spot behind the Phillies. So, you know, the National National League Central were the weakest division. Um, so... If, you know, if, if you want a wild, if you don't win the national division, you better, or the national league, the central in the national league, you better pick it up because the East and the West has strong teams that are in second and third, and they're gunning for those wild card spots. Now, again, there are three wild card spots, but the, you know, since the Brewers now fell out of content or fell out of the division lead, they're also out of contention for the wild card spot. So again, you know, at the time of this recording, they're a game and a half out of both the division and that final third wild card spot. So now, while the Brewers did get a significant return, I was still kind of scratching my head at this because, like, Hater wasn't a free agent. And I, I have a couple of friends, you know, my nephew's a Brewers fan. I have a couple of friends that are Brewers fans. And they were all like, what? Like, a lot of people were shocked at this. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll have to see how this impacts the Brew crew down the stretch. Um, you know, and if they make the playoffs, you know, what, what happens in the playoffs? So that was probably my biggest, I think, shocking trade that I saw. The, the funniest one, is, and this is... It's not a funny trade. It's a funny stat as a result of the trade. The Yankees finally traded the very, very lowly hitting Joey Gallo to the Dodgers. They got back right-handing pitching prospect Clayton Beater. Uh, and while Yankees fan rejoiced um, because, I, you know, Gallo was hitting, you, you couldn't even see the Mendoza line from where he was hitting. It was horrible. He was under 100. So... What was funny about this is that since that trade, the Dodgers, like, they won nine in a row, and now they've, I think they just lost either last night or tonight. So they've gone nine and one in their last 10 games. The Yankees, on the other hand, like, they lost like their first seven coming out of the trade deadline. So they've gone two and eight in their last 10. Luckily, The Yankees still have a 10 game lead over the Blue Jays for the division lead. The Blue Jays are in second. But that's only because Toronto's been just as bad. They've gone three and seven in their last ten games. So it's like the Yankees, you know, they, they went on this horrible losing streak and they're they're playing crappy coming out of the trade deadline. They got rid of their worst hitting guy and you know, traded them to the Dodgers who went on this huge win streak. And the Blue Jays can't even take advantage of it because they've been just as bad. Oh my God, baseball! You just gotta love the irony of it. Um, so I, you know, that's it. I mean, like I said, there were a lot of other trades. I just, I just felt the trade deadline was so blah this year. Um, and not just because you know it wasn't the Cubs giving up their whole t- whole team. You know, it made a lot of headlines last season. Um, but I just, there wasn't a lot that I was like, whoa, no way. Uh, because even last season with the Cubs, there were a lot that we were all like, whoa, look at this one. And that there just wasn't that this year. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. That's just kind of my opinion, how I felt. So that's it for the trades. Um, now kind of back to the Cubs quickly for some other transactions uh, before I close this out. Um, the biggest news, Jason Hayward. He's played his last game in a Cubs uniform. 
He's still on the IL. He's been on the IL for most of the season. However, it has been announced that he will not return as an active player this season. He'll remain in the clubhouse uh, from a leadership and a mentor presence. Uh, but after this season, he will be released by the Cubs, even though he still has a year left on his contract. Honestly, you know, I'm a little bit sad, uh, but I'm not at all surprised. I think it's about time and probably a year overdue. You know, listen, Hayward, he's an amazing leader on this team. It's widely known about the, you know, quote, the, the speech that he gave in the clubhouse during the rain delay in Game 7 of the World Series. A lot of the players attribute to them coming out strong in that 10th inning to that speech. Um, he's a fantastic defensive presence in the outfield as well. You know, he mainly played right. He did play some center. You know, he earned some gold. He won some gold gloves while, you know, he was with us. But his hitting, it's just been atrocious. And it's just been getting worse every year. And, you know, ironically, they're probably going to ban the shift this year. And that's where Hayward gets hit, you know, gets Unfortunately, you know, he gets hit the most. He hits right into the shift um, every time. Ground ball, same freaking spot every time to the, you know, shortstop that's sitting in short, you know, short right center. Um, but, you know, he's definitely had some moments, a couple of walk-offs, a couple of big hits and stuff for us. But, you know what, it's, t it's time for him to leave. It's time to make room for some of these young outfielders that we have, such as, you know, Christopher Morrell, even though he does play some infield. Uh, Nelson Velasquez to have their shot, um, you know, and not to mention, you know, we picked up Seiya Suzuki. He's, you know, back from the injured list. He's he's in right field. So, Jay, hey, we love you. Um, you know, we'll we'll never forget what you did for us for this team. Um, you know, for the the championship run that we had. But yeah, like I said, it, it's time for him to go. Um, that's probably the biggest transaction that we had. Uh, a couple others. We did pick up Franmil Reyes off waivers from the Guardians. We released uh, very often injured this season shortstop Andrelton Simmons. Optioned uh, Frank the Tank Schwindel. He's been optioned to Iowa. Reassigned first baseman Alfonso Rivas there as well. So Patrick Wisdom and PJ Higgins have kind of been splitting the time uh, at, at with the duties at first base. Uh, we optioned David Bodie back to AAA. Um, Wade Miley is on a rehab assignment in Iowa, so he should be back soon. And then we finally brought back Nick Madrigal, and he's been tearing it up since he's been back. He's been hitting like crazy, got some speed. So good good to see him back. Um, hopefully he stays healthy and, and continues his, you know, what we hope he can do on offense. Um, so that's about it. We have about seven weeks left in the regular season. I've got a few more games tucked away to attend. Um, win or lose, you know what? I still have a blast. Um, I just, I love Wrigley. I love it every time I step in. Um, I'm really hoping to renew my, my season tickets again for next year as well. Um, but yeah, that, that about wraps it up. Uh, so again, this is a very, very late July Cubs podcast. I apologize. Um, but remember you can listen to our baseball together casts wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate, review, share it with all your other baseball friends. And again, click on the Baseball Together link in the description. Use that discount code of CUBPOD to save 15% all of all your Chicago North apparel. And as always, feel free to send me any questions, suggestions, etc. And I will see you all in a shortened time frame, just a couple of weeks to recap the dog days of August. Bye. Bye.